Hey guys, and welcome back to my Wii screen. However, it's still not a Wii game, so this counts so that Muramasa is still technically like the last Wii game that I'll ever do. Except, unless I find another one that I want to do, and why is the thing being weird? Okay, so, um, <laughs> that wasn't me. I was holding it at an angle, and it, for some reason it's picking it up. I'm not even pointing it at the sensor bar, and it's still somehow getting the signal. Maybe I'm bouncing it off something. Oh my god! You know what I'm doing right now? I can't prove this, obviously, but... I have like a little mini fridge in my room, and I am literally pointing the Wii Remote at the mini fridge, and I am reflecting the frigging... Uh, you know, the, the laser from the Wii Remote to my TV, and I'm using it like that. Oh my god. I can't prove it, but you just gotta take my word for it. Anyway, now I'm pointing at the screen. So, uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time, but I never really found the time to actually do it normally. Like, I would probably never do this as a standard LP, just because it's not really a standard type of thing for me to do, but I just kind of want to do it, you know? So, it is on the Nintendo GameCube, and... Uh, just so everybody is clear, uh, before I even get into this, this is not going to be a daily thing. This is not going to be every day. This is going to be a weekly thing. So, when this comes out, you can at least, uh, look forward to having longer videos on that day. So, this is going to be a long video. Each one of these episodes is going to be pretty long, just so you know. Um... You can probably already tell what it is, just from one, Retro Studios, and two, the music. Nintendo presents Retro Stu- oh, a Retro Studios game. Oh, what is Retro Studios famous for? Metroid. Oh yeah, Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime 2! Echoes is the only- Oh, well, no, I did play the third one, but this is actually my favorite uh, Metroid Prime game. I know it seems very uh, weird, because Corruption, everybody loves Corruption, everybody loves the first one, but here's the thing. I never played the first game, and I didn't like Corruption, so this is my favorite. So, uh, no? New, okay, we're gonna go to new three. Oh, wait, here, let's just do this, I'll just erase it. Uh, yes. Haha, <laughs> I win. So, um, like I said, this is not going to be uh, normal. Yes, normal. Okay, this is not going to be a daily thing, just so you know. I'll explain why in a little bit. Mission file 02546. Eight days ago, contact with Galactic Federation Trooper Squad Bravo was lost, period. Contract agreement. Locate Federation Troopers and render assistance, period. Data conf confirmation. Last transmission received from a rogue planet located in the Dasha region called Aether. Da uh, dot, period. Uploading last known coordinates now. Blink, 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 blink. Okay. I'm being stupid. Ugh. <sighs> And I am recording this, obviously, I'm recording it on my Wii, and I'm using the, uh, like the HD, or the component cables, not HD. So, this might look better than other people's thing, just because I'm recording it in a higher quality, or I'm playing it in a higher quality, so, yeah. Oh man, it's the first everlasting gobstopper. Too bad it's too big for anyone to ever eat. Yeah, that purple mist, that, uh, you know, the purple stuff around the atmosphere, that looks safe to fly in, right? You gonna do, like, any kind of analysis on that first, Samus? No, just gonna fly straight in, huh? Okay. Zap! Oh no, we're going down! Sorry. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we crash through the ceiling. You know, that ship is pretty amazing. It doesn't even have a scratch on it, even though it got struck by lightning, crashed, and fell through a rock. Like, it fell through 
the surface of the Earth. Like, look at that. Oh, hi, Samus. How you doing? Yeah, you're still going to be silent, huh? Boom. So, okay, that's pretty much the setup. Uh, almost no setup whatsoever. So, basically, we're just coming here to help some dudes, and that's it. Not really a whole ton to go on. So, um, you jump with B, and you can press B, or at least this is the GameCube controls. I don't know if there's, you know, there might be different controls on the, like, the Wii version. Because there's a version of this game where you can play with, like, Wii controls. Because, of course, everybody loved the new controls with the, um, you know, like, the little Wii remote. You know, you can aim with that. But this is the GameCube. So, you jump with B, you fire your arm cannon with A. Uh, if you hit the D-pad uh, up, you go to your combat visor. To the left, you go to your scan visor. And I'll just give an example. You can scan stuff by... Oh, sorry. You can scan stuff by holding L, and it'll give you various information about it. Uh, some are very important to do, some are not. And when you can see this, you see how we scanned it and all this other information popped up, like research, mechanisms, vehicles, and then Samus's gunship? This, when you scan something that is important, or like an enemy, or a structure, or anything like that, it gives you logbook uh, entries. And you can read all this stuff, so when you scan something, you can press start, and you can go to your logbook and read more information about it. So, yeah. And then there's a lot of logbook stuff. So, yeah, I'm not going to be getting all of it, just so you know. Um, at the upper right-hand corner is the map up there. You can see it spinning around. And the blue marks on the map, those are doors. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, we've got, like, a radar. It'll show you where enemies are, but there's none around us. And then right up there in the middle, um, at the, uh, the top of the screen, that's your health bar. So you've got 99 to start with. And... You can hold and lock on to things with L, as you can see. Holding L, and you'll constantly aim at it and fire. Now, uh, for things that are outside your field of view, but you still need to lock onto them, let's say I want to try to I want to lock onto this thing, okay? But I'm turning this way. I obviously can't do it. And also, when you see when you see that little mark appear in the screen, you see how there's like a little tiny little crosshair. When that's there, it means that you're holding down L and you're you're going to be strafing, stuff like that. So you can strafe that way. Anyway, what I was saying before, say I want to lock onto this, but it's outside my field of view. You can press and hold R to look around. So press and hold R and then you can look all around without, you know, changing position. And then you can lock on that way. That'll be useful for later on when things are, like, above us. So you actually have to look up because you move... Um, you don't change your view, like, you don't change which way you're facing with the, uh, like, the right stick, like you would in, say, Halo or Call of Duty. No. All of your movement is handled by the, um, just the regular control stick. So, you gotta move it left to turn left, right to turn right, etc., etc. The only real movement you can do is, um, when you're moving, when you're locked on, you can do left and right to strafe. And when you're not locked on, you pretty much have to do forward and back to do all your movement. And then it's all turning. It can be a little bit confusing to get used to at first, but it's not that bad. So anyway, that's enough of a control tutorial. Um, scan this. Okay. It's yeah, just a plant form, whatever. Um, I'm going to be trying to scan a good bit of the logbook, but I'll tell you right now, I won't be doing all of it. Because I don't think I actually ever have done all of it, even though I've tried my damnedest to do it. I can't. Just because I can't seem to find it, but whatever. Crates! Yay, these are nice. Heavy Galactic Federation crate, okay? Only heavy weapons and explosives can damage them. So, you can shoot it until the cows come home, but not a damn thing will happen. And you can shoot these just three times and they'll blow up. So what you gotta do, press and hold A to charge up your arm cannon. Boom, and it'll blow up. Uh, whenever you see these, these are very important. These are usually like switches. So you have to scan them in order to actually activate things. And then here we have like little lock things, armored security lock. We gotta shoot it. So yeah. Good. Ah, come on. There we go. And there we go. Once you shoot that, the door will open. Hooray. Uh, if you press X, 
you can go into morph ball mode where you can roll around as a little ball because, you know, that's possible. Can I not blow these up? I thought I could blow these up with power bombs or uh, morph ball bombs and yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, you can roll all around. You move a little bit faster and much more freely than you do when you're actually walking around. Um, and if you press A while in morph ball mode, you lay down bombs. So, yeah. I believe... Let me see. Ah, it's right in here. Switch in this little hole in the wall there. <laughs> um, and right here we have dead bugs. All right. Codex Genome Match. Splinter. Okay. Unusual amount of weapon fire. More than necessary to kill. Marines are not known to prone... Are not prone to such overkill. Well, I'm not prone to kicking people's asses, but I can do it. Kinda. <laughs> Whatever. So do you guys just leave posters of yourself, or is that like concept art? And by the way, I can tell that image right here is this image just reversed and shrunk. And so is that one, and that one, and that one. <laughs> these Marines are stupid. It's like, dude, look at all these trading cards I have. This one looks like the same thing, but it's not. So it's totally like a super rare card. And you should definitely pay me like 50 bucks for it. I bet you anything, that's the kind of conversations they have. But anyway, that was a map station. Very, very important. Uh, when you get them, or when you find them, you want to f get them immediately because they give you access to the map. Uh, L and R to zoom in and out. Uh, you can rotate the map with that. You can move with the C stick. You can uh, do a world map by pressing A. And then you can go to level maps. Uh, you can do the key. It shows you what everything is. Like the blue doors, you can open that with any beam. Uh, red doors, you can open them with missiles. Uh, you can see save stations. You can see uh, T. I don't seem to remember what T is, but it's also not marked on the thing. E or elevators, ammo recharge, save station, hints, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. And you can access that at any time uh, by pressing Z. And then you can exit by with either B or Z. Anyway! Oh no! I don't care. Eh, these are Marines. They're idiots. They're basically the Goombas of this game. Alright. <laughs> Pretty much, because they're worthless. Worker Splinter. These are enemies. They are not good. We shall shoot them. Shoot them. Shoot them. Ah, ah. Suck it. Suck my arm cannon, bitches. Call me the Yorkin man. Woman. Whatever. Aha! Uh -huh. You died to a friggin' like little hive worker. You guys suck. And you're covered in power armor, man. Do you have any idea how much the friggin' uh the friggin' Brotherhood of Steel would be ashamed of you? Like, oh my God, you're pathetic. I believe that's a full splint. Oh no, it's not a full splinter. Okay. These ones, uh, they're kind of like translucent a little bit. These ones are super, super weak. They're not supposed to be damaging enemies. So, yeah. Uh, is that? No, it's not. I don't think it is. Alright, we just have to bomb this. So, yeah. Uh, when you're in morph ball mode, you can drop bombs to break things. So, yeah. Is this Half-Life or something? Because that makes me think of those things that hang up on the ceiling. Except the things on the ceiling just kind of puke guts on you. So, yeah. Alright, so, um, oh, I didn't explain that, but, uh, I'll explain in a sec. This is a morph ball switch, where basically you just get inside of it, and you can lay a bomb, and it will activate something. So, yeah. We laid the bomb in there, and it turned that switch on. Good. So, let's go ahead and get out of morph ball mode. Oh, oh no! Purple energy? Oh god. The black people have returned! They've returned from Kirby 64 to come and kick my ass for making black jokes that are so freaking obvious and unfunny. Ow, 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 ow. So, uh, when you're in combat, uh, you can lock on, obviously. That's energy right there. If you pick that up, it restores some health. There are different forms of energy, like that was a little purple ball. That'll give you 10 health back. I believe red ones give 30, blue ones give 50, and yellow ones give 100? I think. So, when you're up against an enemy like this, if you strafe, and then while you're strafing, you press B, you can do like a little sidestep. That can help to dodge enemy fire. So, hang on, ow. Like, I'm just walking right now, sidestep, and sidestep, sidestep, sidestep. It's kind of hard to tell, but basically you just kind of speed up. Ah, that's it. 
that's the uh, 10 energy one. Here, I'll actually scan it so you can see. Small energy unit. Replenishes 10 units of energy. That's it. Um, and if you press and hold A and do a charge shot, you can actually draw power-ups like that to you, so you don't need to actually go and physically touch them. Wow, this music just won't shut up. No! More black people! They're everywhere! They're infecting this planet! Oh my god, that's very racist. I'm just... I'm kidding! Oh my god. Dark Trooper, deceased GF tro soldier. Alright, terminated wife signs. It is a zombie! No, 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 no. Uh, one way to quickly exit out of the, uh, the scan visor is to just hit A. You know, so that way you just shoot. So, yeah. Instead of actually hitting the D-pad up, which I almost never do, um, you're gonna want to do that. It's much faster. If you ever see crates on top of one another, uh, shoot the bottom crate, and all the ones on top will also be destroyed. Oh my god, there's so much that I'm explaining. But, okay, one thing I forgot to say before was that if you're in morph ball mode, lay a bomb and stay on top of it, it will actually jump you. Now, this is kind of pointless in the Wii version to some small extent because uh, what they did was they added a way to just jump. They didn't, like, it doesn't take a morph ball bomb to jump anymore. You can just jump whenever you want. And that's a little lame. I don't like that. It makes it too easy to do some of the morph ball puzzles. But I can definitely see why some people would want it. Because the morph ball puzzles begin to get pretty tough. But, eh. I never really had a problem with it. I was able to do it as a kid. So it's like, come on, guys. Just gotta actually put in a little bit of effort. But, whatever. But hey, I'm playing the GameCube version, so that means I will not be able to use that. So you can see how the morph ball puzzles were intended to be done. You know, back when the game came out. Ooh, it's foggy. Can I scan anything? No. Gee, I sure hope this isn't the exact place where that stupid thing where Samus loses all of her abilities. I sure hope that that doesn't happen in this game. Damn, a cutscene with a main hero's ultimate weakness. And that and locked doors. Hey, it's me! You know, I'm not a lesbian or anything. But that is one nice ass. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to make that joke for a little bit. Scan unknown! Or scan complete. Unknown dimensional anomaly. Anomaly seems to be a dimensional rift. Target destination unknown. How the hell would you know where the target destination goes just from a scan of the, uh, the entrance? Whatever. Whoop! Let's go in! What could possibly go wrong, right? No, 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 no. Whatever. Ooh! Damn, we've entered a sandstorm! And with lots of bug things up there and uh blue stuff. Oh, come on! I thought we were cool! Oh, man. Not that. Man, it looked nice! You have any idea how much it's gonna cost to replace that? God, it's gonna take me like five minutes. Okay, bye! I'm just gonna leave! Even though I clearly had you. Oh no! I am now incapable of moving! Blarg! I don't know why you couldn't just back up and leave, but yeah. Uh, because it always happens, we have lost all of our nice abilities now. Lame. We can't do, like, anything now. It sucks. Oh, all my stuff is missing. Wait, didn't that happen, like, a week ago when I played friggin' Metroid Prime? Huh. Maybe I should, like, glue some of this stuff on. Okay, gear stolen by unknown creatures. Space jump thrusters, offline. Grapple beam launcher, offline. Morph ball boost unit, offline. Power bomb generator, offline. Missile launcher, offline. Morph ball bomb module, offline. Damn! All remaining systems. Oh, yeah, all. Uh. Two of them, I think. 
it's like the two things that you can't live without, you know, the friggin' life support and the ability to make a ball and the ability to shoot. That's it. I'm surprised they didn't take away our scan visor. God. Oh yeah, they are just now teaching you how to strafe. Even oh yeah, see there's the dash right there. Doing, doing. So yeah, that just really helps for dodging enemy attacks. So yeah. And something that's really cool about this game is that if you, let's see, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mash A for a little bit. Something that's really cool is let's see if I can get it. Yeah, if you shoot your gun enough, you can actually see steam rising off the gun after you fire off a lot of rounds. I think that's pretty cool. Aha! Oh, damn, I thought I got the one in the back. Get out of here. So, we walk through here, and this is a save station. Something that will be used a lot. So, yeah. This is going to be used quite a bit. The save stations are very, very important. Obviously, they will save your game. If you die, you respawn here. However, when you use them, they heal you fully. So... That's very useful. It is very, very helpful that they heal you. And you don't have to save to heal. So, yeah, you can do it pretty quickly. Whoop! Oh, what the hell? I was in the elevator! But okay. Scan that thing, activate the elevator, walk into the hologram, and it will take you up. So now we're done with that area down there. Maybe I can finally start uh, explaining what the hell this run is going to be. Even though I'm sure the title has already given it away. But who knows? Maybe it didn't. Because I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. Uh, this was... This episode will be... Rec uh, it was recorded when I uploaded... Let me check. Hang on. Sorry. Uh, I just uploaded uh, episode 3 of Infamous and Muramasa when I was recording this. So, yeah. Oh, the scan visor is useful for gathering information? Oh, man, I didn't know that. Whoop! What is it? What is it? Yeah, green crawly. Or a crawly, crawly. I'm just going to call it a crawly. Omnivorous hunter-gatherer. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I would read all that stuff, but I'm the only one that's actually interested in, in it enough to do it. And especially... Here's the thing, since this is a Let's Play, I'm not going to bore people with all those little tiny details that I'm sure nobody really cares about that much. If you're that interested, just pick up the, uh, you know, the... the oh, I, I don't even know what the game is called, but there's a version, you know, where you get all three games and they're all for the Wii. So, yeah. I would recommend just picking that up. I think it's like the Metroid Prime Collection or something like that. So, yeah. I would recommend doing that if you're very interested in this. However, I would not recommend playing how I am playing this run-through, unless you are very ballsy and you just want to try to challenge yourself, because, uh, you'll see. I'm gonna need to pick up... I'm gonna need to get a list of the items that I want to avoid. Although, I'm sure that as soon as I say that, uh, you already know what the hell is going on here, but... I want to hold off on actually confirming it for just a little bit longer. I don't really know why. It's just kind of fun. It's like, that way I keep you guys in suspense. It's like, oh, what is he? How is he going to play? How is this different? I've seen Metroid like a zillion times. Why should I be interested in this? You'll see. You shall see. The Temple Grounds. Yay. I like how you can actually still see the sky kind of fluctuating. You see how it's going from blue to purple and stuff? Let's see. Is it not doing it anymore, or is it just during that cutscene? Wow, it's just during that cutscene. That's kind of lame. But okay. Uh, let's see. Right, we can't go and get that now. Which sucks, but oh well. Aw, oh, man. Oh, this is fun. Whenever there's a door that you can't destroy, uh, if you try to shoot it with something that doesn't affect it, it just gets reflected off. So let's kill these. Yeah! Kill with reflections. And especially when there's a... It's really, really fun when there's two doors that you can't kill in the same area. So it's like uh, you can reflect your stuff twice. Oh, let me see here. For knowledge, these little things will burst. And enemies will jump... Ah, crap. Yeah. And this is a new enemy. It is a splinter. So yeah, these are just, you know, bigger... Whoa! 
bigger versions of the uh, little bugs we fought before. They leap at you, they don't really do much, so it's nothing really to worry about. Um, a kind of difficult scan to get is a intact splinter cocoon, because you gotta get close enough to actually scan it without it breaking. So that can be a little bit difficult to get, but I have gotten most of the scans in this game. I think the I think the furthest I've ever gotten with the scans, I think I got like 96% or something like that. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things to scan. You gotta scan lore entries, enemies, allies, everything. Different types of minerals, stuff like that. Structural analysis, Densium, all right? Uh, Densium, or you're gonna run into several different types of uh, minerals and stuff like that, where uh, they're weak and you have to destroy them with a certain thing. Okay, override the gates. Oh, those ones closed. Now we're never going to be able to get back there for like the rest of the game. Oh no! Tiny bugs that are easily dispatched with like two shots. Um, you're going to run into several different types of like minerals and stuff that are only destroyable by certain upgrades. So we'll be, uh, it'll be a while before we can deal with Denzium. Just heads up. Okay. Don't care about you. Just gonna scan you. Quick! Let us send out a distress signal. <laughs> I, you know, call me crazy, but I'm not so sure that, like, in whatever year or age or you know millennium this game is set in, I'm fairly certain we wouldn't still be using like satellite dishes. Call me crazy, but. I don't know. It doesn't seem right. Black people, kill them. Gun them down. Oh my god. Ugh. I'm just joking. The only reason why I say that is because there was an enemy in Kirby 64 who was basically just like a little black ball. That's it. And oh wait. And I think all the major enemies were like black, dark purple things. That's the only reason why I'm saying that. I swear to God, if you get angry at me for that, you have no sense of humor or that you're easily offended. In which case, stop it. Anyway, so morph ball, roll in here, go in here, scan that, yes, and scan this. Whoop! And let's get out of here. And th this is not going to be a speed run, just so you know. It's like I'm not speed running this in case that's uh, what you were thinking this is going to be. But, uh, ooh, hey, we found the ship. Well, mission complete, right? Yeah, job well done. Oh. Well, we found him, so we still just still complete. Man, it sure is a good thing my arm cannon can interface with everything. How exactly is this working? Like I'm shooting it? Date cycle 7142 Cosmos final report GMF task for I didn't couldn't even finish it. While on patrol in the dash system, we engage an unknown space pirate frigate. Good thing they have like little security droids to fly out here and get these dramatic camera angles. God. We followed the pirates, but our ship was damaged by a storm. Aether's atmosphere. Yeah, I know, right? Kinda sucks. Kinda that happened to me too. Heavy magnetic activity during the storm disabled our comms, comms systems. Upon landing, we split into two units, one to set up an ops thingy and one to do something else. Each unit was doing fine, no problems. Yeah, that's correct military talk right there. Until they appeared. Also, that's good military dialogue. <laughs> Who is getting these camera angles? Oh no! Uh, lots of blinking lights! What does it mean, sir? I don't know. I forgot what we programmed this thing to do. God. Oh, it's over there. Why can't you guys see them? You guys are blind. Should we call those other guys that we sent off to do stuff? Should we call them back? No, no, man. We got this. I, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe we should call them. Oh, oh. Okay, that's actually kind of... Eh, whatever. So, yeah, as you can see, they suck. Getting killed by bugs. It's no one. <laughs> God. 
We shall steal all the dried canned food. I don't know. I can only be so funny so long, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, Tom and Hose need pizza. Ugh. You'll get your pizza in heaven, soldier. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, they died. Kind of sucks, but whatever. That's why I'm here, to mop up. Did you ever notice that about Samus? She's kind of... It's all she really does. And actually, um... Oh, map station. Ding. And that that's actually kind of an interesting thing about Metroid, or at least Metroid Prime. Because I haven't... I haven't watched enough of the old Metroid games to really remember what the uh, like what the plot is for them. But I know that in the Metroid, like the Prime series, you're usually kind of like it, it's weird. It's like um, the only real the only types of games that follow this kind of narrative are horror games and Metroid games. You know, you show up where something happened. You have to figure out what happened, and you got to try to fix the aftermath. You know what I mean? It's like, think Fatal Frame, you know? In Fatal Frame, everybody's already dead. Everybody's already a ghost. But you got to come in and mop up. You know, to, you know, a little bit less elegantly, you know, put less elegantly. That's what you got to do. Oh, this is very important. This is a special crate. Object analysis complete. This is a Galactic Federation Ordnance Crate. Tactical data suggests the, pers the presence of a personal weapon system. Use of heavy force required to eliminate the crate. Alright, let's do it. Aw, oh, yeah. What's this? Missile launcher. Missile launcher acquired. Now, we already had this before, but I just didn't use any because there was no point. Uh, this is the missile launcher. Oh, ooh, hi. How you doing? These are uh, Dark Splinters. Darkling-possessed insectoid creature. The alien symbiote within the, set, within the spin, uh, splinter augments its strength and durability. Threat level raised. So these are the bugs that kill the, uh, the guys. And as you can tell, they are much, much more uh, badass than the, uh, the little ones. However, the little ones are like a badass rating of 1. So these guys are a badass rating of like five out of a hundred. So they're not dangerous. They're just you know worse than something that's like completely pathetic and miserable. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's it. That is how much effort it would have taken these jackasses to do. But whatever. Anyway, you can scan these. You can scan all these guys. Get a whole ton of uh, uh, lore entries. And basically, lore entries are just like, well, you know, it's just a lore entry, you know? It's something that a character might have said or thought. It's like a journal, you know? It is... That's what I was saying about Fatal Frame. This this game is almost the exact same type of game as, like, a survival horror game, where you show up where something went horribly wrong, and you find out what happened. I wasn't exaggerating at all when I said that, so... Yeah. Anyway... Uh, missiles are required to open red doors, so yeah. Blast shield analysis in case. Analysis indicates that the blast shield is invulnerable to most weapons. A missile blast may damage it. So, when you uh, when you break the blast shield, uh, it just becomes a normal door. So now you don't have to use a missile to open it every time, which is very helpful. Okay, scan you. Roll down in here. Oh no, we have bugs. Oh no, more bugs. God, I feel like such a hero. Destroying, like, little bugs and stuff. God, this is truly a threat to the universe. Hey, how you doing? Now, was there a nest here? I don't think there was. Yeah, no. Okay, these are just different types of crates. So, break them, just like normal. Uh, ooh, that's a missile. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a missile, and it is missile ammunition. They give you five. So, there's that. Uh, I need to scan this thing. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and restore power to that. Okay. So, go through here. Woo! Oh, all right. I can't lay bombs. Thanks, Obama. Ha ah, ha Get it? Obama! Ah, 
God damn it. Anyway, uh, those are the war hive or war wasp hives. You're going to want to hit them with a missile, and then you can break them. Now, if you can take them out from a distance, it means nothing will spawn out of them, period. So that's very helpful. Just be careful you don't miss too much. Um, something about the, uh, the R aiming, it will automatically orient toward the middle of the screen. So you're going to need to actually aim somewhat carefully if you can't lock on to something. Oh, no, no. Here's an example where it's hard to jump up to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and use this to pull it to me. So that can be very helpful in a situation where you can't reach the, uh, you know, the power-up. And scan this. Kinetic orb cannon. Where the hell is that nest? I, I think it's up there. Like, it's up there. And I can't see it from here. Let me see. Yeah, I can't. Oh, well. Here, we're going to go ahead and use this cannon. Woo! Bonk! So, you're going to want to uh, hit that with a missile, weaken it, and then go back in the cannon. Come on. Woo! Boom! There we go. There you are, you bastard. Good. So that, I believe, is all the nests in the area, so you won't have to deal with any more wasps. So that's very helpful. So let's go on through here. Roll on up in here. Do, do, do. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot to talk about. This is all the very basic stuff. Like, we're just starting. So there's nothing really too complex here. So, yeah, sorry if this is boring, but what are you going to do? Bioscan complete. Dead for eight cycles. I don't know what a cycle is. I think it might be a year. I'm not sure. Unknown chemical. It, uh, effect similar to mummification on dead biomatter. Okay. So he is mummified, and he looks like a kinda, sorta, bug person. Yeah, he's got, like, little moth antenna. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, or antennae. I've always just called them the plural and the singular of that. I've always just called it antenna. Woo! God, I got freaking rocket elevators. That's awesome. Although, how exactly does it stay up? You know, how does it how does it stay up and how does it not, you know, area resource scan complete. Local save beacon is active. Oh, thank you. Okay, thanks. I, it doesn't matter. I already knew where it was, but whatever. Anyway, it's going to tell you that the uh, save station is right there. Every now and then, as you progress through the game, it'll tell you where specific things are. Like, if you're taking forever to do something, it'll tell you where you need to go. 8.1 cycles. Uh, likely combat training is some kind of warrior. Lack of gear, armor, or weapons is curious. Okay. Let's see. Local animals target corpse has not been disturbed. Scans suggest the presence of a toxic biochemical within the target. Okay. Whatever. Now, let me see here. I think... Yep! Quick, 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 quick! Oh, damn it, no! Yeah, I got it. That can be actually kind of hard to get. Uh, this isn't the only time you see these enemies, but whenever you see them, they're usually flying around. It can be hard to scan these. They are sand bats. Um, basically, just don't touch them. They don't actually attack. Ow. <sighs> wow. Just don't touch them, and I accidentally jump, of course. So, um, they just fly around. They don't really do anything, so, yeah. Uh, don't bother with them. But, sometimes they'll put they'll put those little guys in an area where you need to get through, and they're going to be flying in your path, so you may have to shoot them. However, they are very, very good for getting uh, power-ups and stuff, like health and missile ammo. Okay, come on. Can I skip this? There we go. Okay, what is this? Because I know I can break this. Uh, it is Towerick. That is, I believe, a morph ball bomb? Yeah, it is. Damn. Oh, well. So, uh, do I end it now? Let me see. Nah, I'll keep going. I might as well get all this beginning stuff out of the way in one fell swoop. What is that? Un uh, unknown energy field is scrambling to scan wave. Okay, field is localized and holding at a steady level. Further investigation advised. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound dangerous at all, right? So, let us walk in. Oh, no! Somebody activated the laser barrier, because, you know, bugs are familiar with alien technology.
Oh no! More black people come to disrupt me. And now they are possessed by Darklings. Okay. Shoot the bug, shoot the bug, shoot the bug, shoot the bug, shoot the bug. Come on. Oh, now other people are getting... Oh, there we go. Look at this. Black people covering for other black... God. This is going to be one of the most... God, people are not going to like this episode when I keep doing that. Uh, let's see here. How do you like a charge shot? Oh, not much. There we go. One shark shot can do it. Oh, hi. How's it going? This is the Alpha Splinter. He's known for training the uh, Ninja Turtles. So, yeah, he's a little bit badass. Anyway, Gigantic Predator. Really? This thing is gigantic? Okay, so it rams people. Ah, whoa. He hit me. Ah, he hit me. He hit me too. <laughs> okay. So this is an area where the dash is very useful. Oh! So, yeah. The dash is incredibly useful against this guy because, oh, you can just dodge his little lunges there. It seems like he tries to, um... Ow! No, not that time. He tries to kind of predict where you're going to go and then jumps ahead of you. So, yeah. You can keep shooting it. It doesn't really matter. You just got to wait. So, while he's transforming like this, he's completely unable to attack. So, go ahead and scan him now. That way it's safe. The Dark Alpha Splinter. Alpha male of a Darkling War Pack. Gigantic Predator with symbiote and enhan enhanced strength, speed, and armor. Let's go ahead and read it, actually. Uh, Dark Alpha Splinters grow in strength and durability, making them an even greater threat than normal. Oh, no! So, yeah, as you can see, I have 1% of items. Like, up there, you know, the data network, that actually tells you how completed you are. So, like, items that would be, like, missile upgrades, uh, and, you know, other collectibles like that. Um scans that is every single thing you can scan so all this scanning I've done is only 10% so yeah let that sink in anyway now he gets a health bar okay so now he doesn't really lunge so much what he's gonna do is he's gonna try to spit at you so when you see it begin to charge up uh, you're gonna want to dash to the side so now and then after he spits he's gonna lunge so yeah um, one thing that can be kind of an issue is that when you're strafing like this, when you try to dodge, the game might read that dodge as a, just an attempt to jump, like it did just then. So sometimes you're going to end up jumping uh, when you try to dodge. That can be a little annoying, but uh, you just got to make sure you're holding the uh, control stick enough to either side, not really forward or back. Because if you are, you're going to jump, and you're you're not going to be moving as far to the side as you might want. Now, that doesn't mean you're always going to get hit when you do your jump instead of a dash, but it can cause some problems. Ooh, shiny. What is it? Unknown technology. <laughs> That's it, huh? Doing. Hey, listen! I'm going to kill your ass! Ooh, God. Oh, what? I had to do something with that. Oh, my God. System alert. Unknown item. Alien technology is bonded to our armor systems. Threat scan complete. No negative impact on suit performance. That's nice. So, let me see. Uh, can I go? Oh, I can't. I can't go back to the save area. Well, damn. Guess I gotta move forward. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. So, um... I don't know why the hell I held off on telling you what kind of run this is going to be. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The freaking, um, the video title will tell you that or the description. Whatever. But it's probably best if I actually describe it, you know. Um, this run is going to be, here's the thing. I don't, oh, okay, wait a minute. We got a cutscene here. I'm not going to explain it just yet. So, yeah, I would explain, but, you know. I don't want to interrupt this too, too much, because this is actual plot stuff now. I heard the no sound that you made. Do not be afraid. I am Yumos, Sentinel of the Luminoth. Please listen and hear of our world's peril. Our world.
uh, long ago, a cosmic object fall to our, fell to our planet Aether, exploding with great force. A rift was torn in time and space, and a strange power flowed over the world. Gross. Once, uh, where once there was one Aether, there were now two, one of light and one of shadow, each existing in its own dimension. It was the end of peace on Aether, for a new race was born that day on the Dark World, one filled with hate and terrible power. They are the Ing. Yes, Ing. The Ing of creatures of shadow and darkness, knowing nothing of peace or mercy. For decades we stood against them, yet now we lie on the verge of defeat. An utter shame for being beaten by a race called Ing. When Dark Aether was born, our planetary energy was divided. Half for our world, half for the Ing. Should one world gain control of this energy, the Ing will perish. Or the other will perish. Thank you for lowering your weapon, bitch. I didn't even do anything. Before you arrived, the Ing had stolen... <laughs> I am going to pronounce Ing that way every time, just so you know, just because it's fun. The Ing had stolen a device from us, one that collects planetary energy. With it, the Ing have weakened our planet to the verge of collapse. Hey, you flipping me off! A fortune smiled on us this day, for the energy transfer module is now bonded to you. With it, you can help us. Help us restore our world. Yeah, yeah. You're our only hope, Samus. How the hell do you know my name? Should we fall, the Ing will look to the stars for new planets to ravage and conquer. Your species could be their next victims. Yeah, well, we don't suck. So, uh, early... Well, okay, the stormtroopers do, but I don't. The Ing have taken our energy to three temples on Dark Aether. Find these temples and transfer the energy from them to our own. I have adapt updated your map system with the location of another temple. There is knowledge there that can help you on your way. Thanks. I have also updated your translator module. You can now access devices and doors coated with violet holograms. Many lands are now open to you. Yay. Thank you. Prepare well for your journey. The Ing now know you pronounce or now know you possess the energy transfer module. They will try to recover it at all costs. Yeah, I know. Return to me once you have restored the energy to a temple. I will aid you as I can. Thank you, Yumos. May the light of the Ing, I mean the light of Aether, shine upon you. Energy fully replenished, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so now that we know what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and scan this because I can read it. Goodbye. Um Basically, what this is going to be, I don't know if this is original, but I've never seen, I've never seen anyone do it. I've never seen anyone advertise for it. I've never seen anyone even bring up the idea of this. So that's why I think it's at least slightly original. But basically, what this run is going to be, it is a, what I like to call, minimal energy run. So as you can see, up there, we have only got 99 energy. We have what amounts to one single energy, ta uh, energy tank. If you pick up an energy tank, it's like a collectible, like uh, missile expansions. Uh, if you pick one of those up, ow, uh, they will give you another 100 energy. Basically, what this run is going to be is I'm going to be going through the game with the least amount of energy possible. So I'm going to be going through the game with one energy tank for as long as I possibly can. And then when I need to upgrade, I will upgrade to two energy tanks, then go as far as I can from there, so on and so forth. Basically, think of it like a three-heart Zelda run, except Metroid. Um, now, these videos are going to be weekly, like I said in the beginning of the video. Uh, I don't know when they're gonna be coming out, but it's only gonna be once a week, so it might be like Saturday or Sunday. Because, you know, I figure people are off on those days, you know, they less chance of them working, less chance of them in school, so they might have the time to watch a longer video. So, I'm going to be doing the best I can to go as far as I can. However, I did practice this once before, and I made it about... Let me think. Oh, crap. More bugs. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm just going to skip it. You know what's going to happen. They're going to they're gonna get possessed, whatever. Or maybe they won't. Oh my god, I killed them before they could get possessed. Oh my god, that's awesome. Suck it, Darklings. That's what you get. Or maybe I should call them the Ing, because that's what they are. Anyway. 
Uh, break that open. I believe... Aha! That is an energy tank. Suck it. Alright, energy tank. Permanently increase your maximum energy capacity by 100 units. Nope. Not getting it. So, um, let me think. The furthest that I got was the boss of the third temple, and then that was the point when I needed to actually get another energy tank. Um, I'm gonna be doing my best to try and see if I can beat him with one, but I tried several times to beat him, and it was I died the same way every time. So, I'll definitely give it a shot, but if I can't do it, then I will not hesitate to go and get a, uh, another energy tank. However, I did get that far at the very, very least, so I will be doing my best to get through to there without getting another one. Or, well, doing my best. I will get through there. I will get to there without needing another energy tank. So, you can look forward to that. So, this has the potential for a lot of death. A lot of death, and a lot of pain, and a lot of suffering. So, uh... Let's see. Oh, missile expansion. Yay. Do, 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 Um, these are gonna be very long videos. As you can see, this is the first episode, and it's nearly an hour long. So, yeah. Because, you know, you're only getting one a week. So, next time on Metroid Prime 2 Echoes Minimal Energy Run, we're going to be going to the first major area of the game, the Agon Wastes. So, I'll see you guys then.